welcome to worship at Pilgrim Lutheran Church and School on this Easter Sunday. Alleluia, Christ is risen. This is a season. Easter is a season in which we celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate God's presence in us and with us, especially through the witness of the Apostle Thomas, a wonderful sermon from our seminarian uh, Cornelius Koppel, who is a candidate for word and service ministry as a deacon in the ELCA. And welcome to our guest musician, Sam Reese. Uh, thank you for the wonderful English class uh, and explore the Bible session that we just enjoyed downstairs. Uh, we now look forward uh, to growing in this resurrection season closer to God and one another. So we are a fully welcoming and affirming congregation uh, and we're so thankful that each and every one of you are here. Uh, let's take a deep breath and continue to prepare our hearts and lives for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God. The Word made flesh our life and our salvation. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Welcome to this moment of amazing grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah! We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah! We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah! We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Christ, I'm gonna play the drum. I said, I am one, I am bread, I am one, I am bread, get
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated with the children. May come forth. Invitamos a todos los niños. Uh, CPS uh, and Pilgrim Spring Break. I hope everyone had good time of rest or travels. Uh, today we are learning about a very important follower of Jesus. His name is Thomas. Now Thomas has been labeled in the past. Are labels good or bad when we label people? Does that sound good or bad? Bad, bad I think. I, I agree. Uh, so to Thomas I was labeled doubting Thomas. Oh because he said, I'm not gonna believe that Jesus is alive unless I see him risen, come back from the dead. That's what Easter's all about. And there was a time that Jesus came in the Gospel of John to appear to the disciples, but they were behind a locked door for fear that they would get hurt, just like Jesus was hurt after uh, he went to the cross and was killed. So that's kind of a natural feeling. But Thomas wasn't there. Now, why wasn't Thomas there the first time? No one knows, but it could have been that he wasn't as scared as the other disciples. And is there anything wrong with wanting to see someone who you hear is alive? And how many times do we see people come back alive from the dead? Like maybe it's happened once, right? <laughs> so it was very natural for him to want to see Jesus. That's why we've all come here to see Jesus and to see Jesus in this community 
called an Easter community. So uh, it might be that uh, Thomas was more brave than all the other disciples because he was out walking around. Uh, and then um, the other really cool thing that I think Cornelius is going to mention in his sermon is out of all the apostles, out of, out of all the apostles, Thomas went the furthest. It is very, very likely that he went all the way from the Middle East and Jerusalem area in Galilee to India, which is really far. And there are still Christians there that talk about stories of when St. Thomas went to India. And the part of India that St. Thomas went to has the largest percentage of Christians in all of India. Karala, the southern tip of India, has the most Christians out of all the areas in India because probably St. Thomas went there and told people about the resurrection. So it's a really wonderful story for us. Let us pray. Uh, God, we thank you uh, for Thomas, for his deep faith and the way he went and told people, especially after experiencing you. At Holy Communion today, we will get a chance to see you, to touch you, to receive your living presence in our lives. And we need you. We need you this morning, and especially with these children here. Uh, we want to be a strong community of faith uh, that can raise up the leaders through Pilgrim School, through Pilgrim Church, that this world desperately needs. So help us to walk in your resurrection light. Let's bless Pastor Anakari and all those assisting with Sunday School today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. <clears throat> now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned, owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The second reading is... Uh, uh, there's also an audience um, interaction um, from Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, flowing down the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing life forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John. You all Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, 
and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Also the doors were shut. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my sight. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other sights in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Thomas walked slowly through the streets. His eyes were fixed on the ground, and his thoughts keep circling back to the events of the last few days. Thomas was sad, but he was also anxious and disappointed. This was not how he had imagined it would be. It had all started so well. They had found him, the Messiah. Jesus, the Savior, but now he was dead. Thomas was sad. He had believed that Jesus was the Savior. He had trusted Jesus. But now he had been disappointed. Everything was over. Thomas needed some rest first. That's why he hadn't gone to the meeting of the other disciples. He wanted to be alone first. No one understood him anyway. 
Jesus had always understood Thomas. Jesus had known him, and Thomas could tell Jesus everything. Jesus is the Son of God. That's why he knows us. He knows us very well. He even knows our thoughts, our feelings. Jesus knows what we are thinking, even if you are sad or anxious, like Thomas was now. This lesson I used two years in a use and confirmation uh, lesson, and I translated it. I used it in Germany, too. So maybe next slide. This is the... This is the story we are used to of Thomas, the disciple, which we use in the Sunday school or in our confirmation class. And I love this picture, this cartoon I used to. We don't know how Jesus appeared, in which figure. Was it in a light, angel-like looking? We don't know. We can imagine. I like this picture with a light, angel-like figure, but we don't know it for sure. So when I was like confirmation age myself, you know, starting to lead Sunday school after having received it, I was considered with the role of disciples. Maybe some of my committee members here know this is one point of view I am studying on the role of disciples. I feel some call myself, and some, maybe, of you feel the disciples call. So, if something disturbed me, like the apostle, who, which is called the Doubting Thomas, all through a long Christian era, he's almost always referred to this dishonorable attribute. How could an apostle who traveled the far, farthest like almost India or India, braving violent seas and lived through diverse and strange cultures, having endured all the pain of linguistic barriers, and for his faith in the risen Lord could be dubbed a disbeliever in the very same resurrection. So if we look on the gospel, and this is a lot of studying work, I actually found out this Bible, I found it out right today, is a German translation, I didn't know this before, of Luther, and Martin Luther translated the Gospel first, the New Testament, the Greek Gospel. And there were other translators, but what Luther really did first was looking to the very first Greek version of it, the original oldest one we could find. And if you look at this and study all the Greek versions, there is no doubt, no Greek word for doubt in the original gospel. So it's about belief and not believing. So the second thing we can learn on scripture, all the gospels, is the appearance. Who is appearing most of the 12 disciples? Simon Peter, I think we all know, is kind of spokesperson or the kind of leader guy, sometimes a little overreacting, and he's a spokesperson for the disciples. But the second one, even I'm surprised, maybe you, is already Thomas. And especially if you look on citations, so really quoting, really speaking, not just being mentioned, really speaking. And this is very interesting because it's very high concerned, keeping emotions under control, but still showing a deep face and not any signs of doubt. Don't worry, I will not look on all the appearances in gospel on detail for the time, but I look on the very first appearances. It's also in John. Maybe we know the story of Lazarus. So, the context of this first intervention was two days after the death of Lazarus in Bethany. 
and Jesus and his disciples were quite far away from Bethany and you had to walk all the distance to reach the home of Mary, Martha and Lazarus. You remember the story when Martha and Mary were concerned about brother Lazarus dying and Jesus is too far away and too late in their opinion. So what happened with the disciples? They pleaded with Jesus and said, it is not long since the Jews there were wanting to stone you, O Lord. Are you going there again? So at this moment, the courageous words of Thomas came. Let us also go that we might die with him. So this statement speaks for himself or itself. Nobody can see a doubting or hesitating person but a daring apostle. I don't know if I would be there, if I would be so courageous. They almost stoned Jesus in other days. So going back, even they're so late and it's such far a distance. I don't see a doubting Thomas there. And thanks to Google, by the way, the daring Thomas. It's a Google. I was going on the courageous. <laughs> so this is great help for me today. So. If we also look closer on the first reading, the new revised standard version helps us calling him the twin. But the actual name of Thomas is Judas. We also have Judas Iscariot, but Judas was a name like Jim or Bill or Bob at this time, one of the maybe most common names under Jews at this time. So his name was Judas Didymus, original Greek, or Thomas. This means twin. But if we look closer into history scholars, we don't know what kind of twin. We know of siblings. We know Simon Peter's brother, and we know of siblings and the disciples, but there's no mentioning of the this twin of Thomas there. So maybe there is a twin somewhere, but maybe some mention it's a kind of look very similar to Jesus. In some medieval artworks, if you want to find out Thomas under the 12 disciples, with all the paintings, then you choose this one who looks Jesus most look alike. But on the other side, I feel maybe I'm a kind of twin to Thomas. Um, at least I want to, some parts. And, well, Thomas, I'm a German, and Thomas is often noted as the kind of scientist, a German disciple always sees a big problem instead of a challenge. And instead of being emotional with the Holy Spirit is more concerned with his brain and cautious and want to double check everything. <laughs> so, yeah, if we look on uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So this is the most famous picture in all art. I don't really like it. It's so dark and the people look very white, old man, and this looks more like surgery, not like resurrection or Jesus. It's a little, oh, I have a pain here, but it's the most famous picture of Cavaccio, like with the scholars of Michelangelo, you know, in Rome, Vatican City but I still have to use here. We have a school here. Our motto is academic excellence with a heart. So I actually went to med school and I taught med students anatomy. So professor there, you will not know, and still don't like the picture. But usually if we are now as humans and maybe also in the time of Thomas, we are focused on our eyes, on our as is one of the five senses, too much. We also can hear, I mean the disciples maybe didn't even notice the voice at first because we had too much focus on the eyes. We have smell, taste, but forgotten the feeling, touch. So this is very important for kind of scientific approach for me that Thomas is a strong belief and dares to ask the questions, not fears. Never, there's not even 
we don't have to talk about is it doubt, is it not believing. In the gospel, there's nothing mentioned that Thomas ever doubts Jesus cannot resurrect or power of God. Thomas just wants to double check. Don't hear on rumors gossip of the other maybe overexcited people or other disciples and want to feel maybe this light figure. He just wants to check because in a kind of angel looking, he wants to double check with all his senses, not only one. So this is a feeling for me with the strong face of the academic excellence with all your senses and with your heart. So kind of combined image. So if you go to the next slide. So the last words, they are also on your bulletin on the first side is my Lord and my God. Very simple and short maybe, but this short little sentence said it all. It came from deep within the heart and so was pregnant with deep feeling and meaning, full of resonances and overtones. It's an expression of deep and unflinching faith in the divinity of Jesus. It was an expression of unconditional commitment to the person and mission of Jesus. And indeed, for Thomas, unlike the other 10 apostles, this personal encounter with the risen Lord was a profound transforming experience. Many scholars consider this response of Thomas the paradigm, the best expression of the profession of faith. So with these words, let's close with a little prayer. Dear God, thank you having here a gathering on the eighth day where the eighth disciple, Thomas, did have an encounter with you and really made a great statement of faith. So help us taking some call and mission and good news for a role model for your apostle Thomas and spread the new good news in the world. Amen.
Apostle Thomas, after singing a 500-year-old hymn, we say, and we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscious power, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Risen Christ, as you drew near to Thomas and the disciples, you draw near up to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and we witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all creation, your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our yeah. prayer. O oh God of the city, you desire wholeness on every street and in every neighborhood. Empower us to end gun violence. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of healing and compassion, you hear your people crying out for justice, crying out for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially Brooke and Trent Barkley, Blaze Barton, Justina Calderon, Valerie Carlson, Joey Coco, Sue Couch, Lisa Cuff, Judy Daniel, Michelle Gonzalez, Irma Gronau, Carissa Hamel, David Kelly, James Knuth, James Mowry, James Nelson, Felix Ramos, Luis Ramos, Marie Shaw, Darlene Studeman, Renee Studeman, Sue Studeman, and all those we name before you now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of the resurrection, we thank you for the lives of those who now rest in you, especially Katie Sullivan, and Carl J. Dorfler. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, including ourselves, those who are grieving, those that are yearning and hoping, those of us that want to live out the love and the light and the hope that only your resurrection bring to us and to the world. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share the peace one to another.
also for you. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places, but especially this place, and especially right now, give thanks for the living presence of our Lord and our God, showing up in a way that we can touch and taste and experience in community to let the Holy Spirit be breathed upon us, the power to forgive and to be forgiven, to be reconciled to God and to one another, and to be an Easter people in this neighborhood for such a time and place as this. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, with the saints of every time and every place, we praise your name, O God, and join their unending hymn.
so we remember. In the night which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. De igual manera, después de haber cenado, el Señor tomó la copa, dio gracias, y la dio a todos sus discípulos diciendo, Tomen y beben, esto es el nuevo pacto en mi sangre, derramado por ustedes y para todo el mundo para el perdón de los pecados. Hagan esto en memoria mía. And now we pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus teaches us to pray, each in our own way and language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. We forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. May be seated. In the future, Alright, so it's my joy right now to welcome you all to this table. This is not Pilgrim's table, it's not a denomination's table. It's the Lord's table. And it is the Lord who has come to us in risen form and through the Holy Spirit and through bread and wine to be the living presence for us. Uh, we invite you to come forward as the ushers direct you. Uh, we have both uh, gluten bread and gluten free bread available by request. If for whatever reason you're not ready to receive this morning, come forward anyway, and you, with your arms crossed, and you will receive a blessing. We also offer both wine and grape juice, the grape juice being the lighter colored cups up here. And uh, if you have limited mobility, we will come to you. So just as we're breaking up from the holy huddle, here, uh, we will come and uh, bring you communion as well. Please come forward as the ushers direct you. Christ shed for you. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ shed
presence of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you growing in God's grace. Amen. So good to be in worship with each and every one of you. If any one of you had stayed home, it would be a different experience. Uh, welcome to those of you who haven't been here in a while. Uh, those of you uh, who are here for the first time, welcome. We do hope you filled out a connection card so we can know how to be in touch with you and how to pray for you. Uh, we have a very busy Sunday coming up next Sunday uh, in that we will be celebrating the First Communions. Uh, five uh, families that have been journeying with us throughout Lent on Wednesday evenings. It's always a really joyful and meaningful Sunday. Uh, we also want to alert you to just uh, three weeks from now. It is a Party for Pilgrim, which is our big uh, annual fundraiser. Uh, that we invite all alumni, all current school families, church members, friends of Pilgrim uh, to come. Uh, it'll be at 6 p.m. on April 27th at Trigger, which is on California and uh, Addison. And it's a great venue, a great time. Tickets are $75 each, or you can just make a donation. Uh, we uh, do really want to have a strong year uh, in Party for Pilgrim because there's a lot of ministry uh, that God has for us to do through our strengthening our school and our church and our hot meals ministry and so that fundraiser benefits all of that and the future that God has in store for us so please show up and uh, if you can't come make a generous donation uh, it's a really important uh, event uh, especially this year uh, we look forward uh, to other opportunities to grow and serve. Please, uh, if you don't get our emails, uh, please uh, go to uh, your email address and, and sign up for our newsletter that goes out on Fridays. Pa uh, President Jim Volkins uh, is downstairs preparing for just an informational uh, update on how things are going from a council and leadership level here at Pilgrim. That will meet in the annex about 10 minutes after the service concludes. And finally, we have something uh, significant, uh, kind of sad, uh, but ultimately very good to do. Daniel Herrera uh, has been with us for a year and a half living uh, in this community and part of our church. I don't think he's missed a Sunday. I don't think you've missed a Sunday. I don't think he's missed a Sunday in a year and a half, uh, which is a remarkable thing. Uh, he is here uh, seeking asylum from Venezuela and he has also applied for his entire family to come and they are still in Venezuela, uh, his wife and his children, so we pray for that. Uh, but he came here with two friends, uh, another Daniel and um, Jose, and they have been living in Eau Claire and they finally persuaded him to move to Eau Claire, Wisconsin with them. Uh, so he, this is his last Sunday as a resident of Chicago for now. Uh, it's uh, many of you know how dedicated he's been to this ministry coming every Saturday to hot meals all the services on Sundays he was baptized here in June of 2023 Father's Day and so we just like to pray for him and before we do uh, we give him a chance to, to share a greeting Buenos dias. Eh, bueno, ya todos me conocen. Mi nombre es Daniel Herrera. Soy de Venezuela. Ya tenemos aquí aproximadamente, ya tengo año y medio de estar compartiendo con ustedes. Me siento... Me siento contento y agradecido porque haberlos conocido ustedes Ha sido una bonita experiencia. I am so thankful to God to have met you all. This is a beautiful experience. 
Y darle gracias a Dios por porque este día se haya, se haya llegado. Eh, y esto a veces me hace pensar que, que Dios tiene un propósito de, por cada uno de nosotros. Porque hace año y medio estamos en el terminal de Chicago, solo con fe nada más, porque hasta que no teníamos dónde ir ni, ni nada. ¿no? Y a veces uno piensa, bueno, Dios proveerá. Siempre nosotros, lo que es el venezolano, tenemos un dicho que siempre decimos Dios proveerá. Si no tengamos nada, siempre tenemos esa palabra que Dios proveerá y siempre ha sido así. Y ahí fue en ese momento que conocimos a la pastora Anacari, la, la, otra, la, la pastora Lisbe. Y, y bueno, este... Son cosas de Dios que, que no, haya, no lo haya puesto en nuestro camino, porque es como es cuando uno dice que cuando uno tiene miedo, acude al Señor y el Señor lo salvará. Eh, no teníamos un hogar donde llegar y Dios ha abierto las puertas de su hogar para nosotros. O sea, que es algo que ya... Estaba escrito ya que, que eso se iba a dar así. Well, um, Daniel is saying to you that um, God has great purpose for everyone in our life, in our path. No one is in our life by accident. And he said, um, when I first arrived to Chicago a year and a half ago, um, I just we arrived to the Greyhound bus station with literally nothing literally nothing but faith in God. And we have a saying in uh, faith in Venezuela uh, that God will provide. And we are so thankful for your church that God has provided you. Um, that they did, uh, he said, I did not have a home to come to. Thank you, uh, Pilgrim, for being a home for people. And he said that um, God tells us whenever we're afraid to just come to God, God is our savior. And he wants you to remember that everyone in your life, in your path, is there for a purpose. Quiero agradecerles al pastor y a la pastora que han sido como, han sido parte de, de nuestra familia, lo considero que fueran mi familia. Y son unas grandes personas. Darle gracias a Norma también, que, que es una buena amiga. A Betty, a Miguelito, que es mi padrino. <laughs> a René, bueno, y a todos ustedes más los conozco, pero no, no me sé los nombres. Yeah. <laughs> a Pan, a yo, que están pendientes de, de que uno aprende inglés, siempre tienen la motivación de estar ahí con nosotros cada día. A la congregación, porque con nosotros han sido buenas personas. He's looking at your faces because he wants to remember your faces. He came here, he's told us, um, you know, you have many things that you think will happen, but he realized this is life is a spiritual journey. And he's so thankful to have met everyone here in this church. He thanks uh, Pastor Christian and myself. Um, he thanks uh, Norma for being a good friend. He thanks his godfather, Miguel Arcangel. <laughs> he thanks uh, Renee. Uh, a student for hosting Bible study, Pam and Joe for hosting the English classes, and he really thanks every single one of you for being a loving congregation around him as he goes to another Lutheran congregation. Uh, tonight they are uh, making Venezuelan food at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and he and the other Daniel and Jose have become leaders in Emmanuel Lutheran in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. God bless you, everybody. I love. This is for you to remember us that God is with you, and we our prayers continue to be with you. Yes. Um, it's a cross. <laughs> Vamos a orar. We're going to pray for him. If you would, uh, raise a hand to help bless him and encourage him. Uh, dear God, we thank you so much for Daniel. 
Uh, we are so thankful you brought him into our path. And uh, we're so thankful for the ministry he will be continuing on at Emmanuel Lutheran in Eau Claire. Uh, we also uh, thank you uh, for the witness that he has brought here uh, of your faith, of your love, of your provision. Uh, we pray uh, for his safety as he travels to Eau Claire. It's a strange place, God. Protect him. It's a strange, Wisconsin, just strange. I'm just kidding. And uh, we also uh, pray uh, that you would bring his family uh, together uh, to be here uh, as they have also been applying for asylum. Uh, Lord, we ask uh, that you continue to bless this congregation to be living up to its name. We are pilgrims. We are pilgrims seeking holy places, holy experiences, uh, to be of service of those uh, who are not only in need, but bring gifts and enrich this community. So thank you, Lord, uh, for Daniel, and may he be blessed, his entire family, and our growing ministry be blessed in the name of the Father. In the name of the Father, y del Hijo, and the Spirit of Santo. Amen. 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 Let's give God praise for them. Please stand for the blessing. Now may the blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.